It's the day-to-day -day life that you could not imagine today. Reading the actual newspaper seems to bring back into current context, and that's what a lot of people get a kick out of. You know, they'll sit there and it's like they, if they move back into that time and they're actually living the same time that their grandparents or great-grandparents were there. 14 years ago, retired engineer Tom Trinisky started scanning old newspapers and then making them searchable free of charge online. Now we got the radio, the television, the internet. So I mean, back then, that was it. Trinisky's website, which he runs out of his home in the small town of Fulton, New York, has grown into one of the largest digital collections of historic newspapers anywhere in the world. There's nobody helping me. I'm a one-man band. Consider the Library of Congress's newspaper site Chronicling America. The National Endowment for the Humanities has awarded $22 million in grants for the project, and there are now 5 million newspaper pages on the site. Tom Trinisky has 22 million newspaper pages on his site, and he's spent nothing but his own time and money. Trinisky's site also gets about double the amount of web traffic, with 6 million page views per month. These people are on there 24-7. During the nighttime, as the hours change, I got people from the foreign countries coming on there looking up stuff. The capacity of computers to locate keywords buried anywhere in an old newspaper has opened a vast body of knowledge to researchers. Before old newspapers were digitized, they were photographed and rolled up into microfilm. Even though the data might have existed in that newspaper, you wouldn't find it because there's just so many rolls of film you've got to look through to find that little bit of text. The advent of scanners that read microfilm made it possible to make a digital copy of an old newspaper without going back to the original paper version. Trinisky, who's a high school graduate, purchased his first microfilm scanner for $3,500 in a fire sale in 2003. He installed a keyword recognition program, set up a network of PCs to do the heavy processing, and began uploading the images to a server that's located in a gazebo right on his front deck. Once the computers come along, people would just type into the search engine the name. It would find it in a newspaper, and they would get something that it's instantaneous, they can do it from home, and it doesn't cost them a nickel. Of the 500 papers available on the site, the largest in terms of page volume is the Brooklyn Daily Eagle. The Brooklyn Daily Eagle is the best. As far as headlines goes, the pictorials, what they covered, and the depth of information they went out and got. The Daily Eagle was among the most widely read and influential newspapers in 19th century America. Poet Walt Whitman wrote over 800 items for the paper and served as its editor from 1846 to 1848. During the Civil War, the Daily Eagle had the largest circulation of any evening paper in the United States. The Brooklyn Public Library spent two years and about $400,000 digitizing just the first 62 years of the Daily Eagle's run, which totaled about 150,000 pages. That was back in 2003. For the last 10 years, the library has been trying to raise money to finish the job. In the meantime, Tom Trinisky digitized the entire 115-year run of the newspaper. Basically did the project all myself. It took me approximately four months to do the complete newspaper, from start scanning to the finished product, which the OCR imaged, word recognized. The Brooklyn Public Library's Daily Eagle site and the Library of Congress's Chronicling America meet professional cataloging standards. They have fewer keyword recognition errors, and they're easier to search for casual users. Trinisky's website, which includes swimming fish and the occasional live video stream of squirrels eating corn on its front deck, looks nothing like that of an institutional library. We have also have a picture of myself as an old spider on there, and it's called the original web crawler. So you can come to my site and say, this is gaudy, it's crazy, I've never come back here. That's not the point of it. The point is the newspapers that I have available for free, forget the interface. Once you hit the search button, all that stuff disappears and you get to see the newspaper. There have been about 150,000 different newspapers in America, going back to colonial times, many of them still languishing in archive stacks and microfilm rolls, out of reach for keyword recognition software. I'm not going to make really a big dent in it. I'm doing a lot, but there's so much newspapers out there, it's phenomenal. I get a lot of satisfaction making people happy, finding the information. It's just that it's really nice looking back in time and reading about what was going on.